I she can send it out. Castro here with Daniel Betancourt here with me. Right. Can convert to close that. Oh, we're going to be running at a high level profit. Let's maximize the market in our favor as real estate professionals. What's this up? What's good. up? Happy Monday, everybody. And I hit go too early, Daniel. Sorry about that. Oh, uh, good. The music, gets, the music gets me fired up every Monday morning. <laughs> That's right. Todd Troth here and Daniel Betancourt talking about all things real estate on how to produce. Crush your week. Uh, yes. Thank you for joining us. Embracing the last quarter of the year. Yes. So, Daniel, before the call, we were, or before we went live, we were just talking about some things to do for the fall. This is you know, what are you doing with your community to kind of engage in what, are, you know, I know we've just, we're coming out of October and um, going into November, December. What are your thoughts and what have you guys done? Well, for the second year in a row, we just did a, a uh, pumpkin patch potluck in my neighborhood. So that's something, uh, something that we've done now. This is the second year. So we did it last year. We did it this year. Last year was a little bit more like in the pandemic towards the end of the pandemic or whatever. But uh, I think a lot of people were really missing just getting together. And so it was it was welcomed with open arms in the community. And then this year um, it was awesome. So basically what I did, we have a, a pumpkin patch potluck. So I invite the neighborhood. People can bring their own food. Um, I set up my tripod and my camera. Last year I had a like fall backdrop that I bought from Amazon that was really cool. Um, this year they rearranged some things in my neighborhood. So there was just this landscaped area that was perfect as a natural backdrop that we used this year. So I set up a tent, uh, the team Betancourt table. I bought dozens of pumpkins to uh, give away to kids. And I bought um, pumpkin decorating kits that you can stick on and stick in the pumpkin. The goal was not to make a mess, but someone who attended the uh, event brought a, like a couple of carving kits. That was their contribution. So all the kids ended up, you know, chopping up the pumpkins and they were there. It did make a mess. But uh, but it was awesome. You know, the, the community had a chance to get together. A lot of neighbors who'd never met got together. Um, we had a fire log going on one of the community grills to make s'mores. So the kids really loved that. It was right next to the community playground. So the kids got to play, you know, and, and, and do those things. And it was just a good time to uh, for community. And, um, you know, the magic a lot of times. What, what, what in my coaching, we believe the magic of events, one, you know, you get everybody together. So that's great. But the other, you know, secondary magic is invitation. You know, you get to connect with a lot of people just by inviting them. And it, it, it's kind of one of your touch points. If you're touching your sphere of influence X amount of times throughout the year, every time you have an event, the opportunity to invite those folks can be several of those touches. So um it was it was great and we enjoyed doing it the kids had a lot of fun uh it would have been nice if the temperature was 15 degrees cooler but it was it was you know we'll take 83 instead of 93 but um last monday was awesome weather to do it but uh this weather this this weekend things warmed up a little bit but you know there's still a little time to do i know have you've done some trunk or treats in the past haven't you yeah they we, we have and you know and like you said the the events is all about the invite um and the more you can get in front of people the better i mean obviously cost wise it's always nice to know who's coming but at the same time it's uh if we invite 500 people and 50 show up we did our job we were able to get in front of them um the 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 trucker treats that we've done we did those for about three and a half or three and a half i think four years we had one planned for covid then obviously that was the last year we did it which i would love to get going again with it Mm -hmm. we'd have like six or eight businesses we'd have a food truck we'd have a um I, the last year we did it i was in a dunk tank um so i i really didn't like that because my my son and his friends were older so they're all a lot better at pitching and a lot better at throwing the ball at the target you know they, they should have done that when they were younger and they couldn't throw as well or, or as hard um, so the, the thing would have gone but it was a good time um we had a petting zoo we've had you know, we'll bring 200 pumpkins and give them away to all of our clients. We had gift bags for everybody to go. Um, so it was a cool community thing, but it wasn't necessarily community. It was more client driven. And I like what you're doing for the community, going and just buying a ton of pumpkins, going, showing up somewhere and everyone gets a pumpkin. Um, COVID, we pivoted and brought it to the office. We did pumpkins and pitchers. So everyone who came got a fall pitcher 
along with a pumpkin to go home and carve. And we got, yes. they weren't little pumpkins. They were big ones. Um, we still have actually on our table at the office, we still have those stick on um, pumpkin kits. Uh -huh. And um, so the year before we did, we dropped off pumpkin carving kits. So that was a, a Popeye idea. Uh -huh. um, and then, you know, there's just a lot of stuff you could do with the, with the holidays and even partner with local church. If you need room, um, I know, uh, San Lando up here just got like 2,500 pumpkins in, which is crazy. Um, <laughs> you know, Kendrick just did the same thing. He, I think he bought almost a thousand pumpkins to deliver out in his neighborhood. Yes. Um, so it's just a cool way for everyone to stop by, say hi, see what's going on. And, you know, if you have a couple hour event, they're not dedicated to the whole time and, they could be there for 10 minutes for I've had some stay for two hours for the whole thing. And they're just right. sitting around talking to their friends that are there. Yep. Yep. Exactly. There were, there were kids that came and, you know, parents came in and out, but it was, uh, it was just a good time and everybody was thankful and appreciative for doing it. And uh, they also got some HOA business mixed into the, uh, you know, they're trying to get some votes for <laughs> something. So someone came along with their clipboard and, and called it the uh, pumpkin patch, pumpkin patch, uh, proxy <laughs> there you go should we do this again next year <laughs> so yeah it was it was awesome and most hoa communities have some community areas that you can do something like that in and then uh we you know the after halloween we've got uh thanksgiving coming up so we've all done some thanksgiving events in the past what did you do most recently we did a um last year we, we did a pie uh giveaway so we brought everyone to the office and um uh, I think I forgot what point of the, the holiday it was. It was like the the week the week before. Sorry, it was the week before or the Thursday before Thanksgiving, and so they all we I think we picked up 200 pies and had everyone come to the office to pick them up. But what we did again was made it a Christmas themed fest like pitcher opportunity. So we had the Christmas tree set up, we had the green couch, we had the decor set up, and they all got to come over get a, a family photo, and um then get a uh, get an apple or cherry pie and then take and then do their thing and a lot of them again hung out for a bit we had crash for the kids um and we did that last year again at the office using the space there mm -hmm. and um you know after they did that ashley edited the video the photos and got them all off to the clients so they had a family photo there um and then it turned into a team event too so a lot of the team was there we got our team you know holiday picture um yes yeah so i mean People do drive-by um, uh, pumpkin pick or pie pickups as well. So figure out a way to do it. But I think it's a great, you know, everyone wants a holiday pie. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, you know, events don't have to be super expensive. There is affordable ways of doing events. If you like ideas, affordable ideas for events, let us know. We're happy to help. But there's, you know, there's a ton of opportunity to do events, do giveaways, do um do, you know, mailers just right now we're kind of entering into the holiday season. So it's a great opportunity to uh, connect with a lot of people that you haven't connected with. Now is the time. Now is the best time, really, if there's someone that you haven't talked to in a couple of years that you sold a home to or three or four or five years. Now is a great time to rekindle those relationships uh, during the holiday season. So um, and, and, you know, for people who are timid to call or whatever it is now is the best time to do it now it's kind of the best reason to get in touch with someone during the holiday so um same thing you know we've done open houses where we bring a ton of pies invite everybody we'll make it an event you know just you get more traffic into your open houses you give some pies away for the holidays and uh that's something that you all can be doing out there so it's okay. it's a great great time for that to do something you know pumpkin themed thankful themed, Christmas themed, whatever it is, it, it's we're in, in that season. And so you want to, you know, as we go into next year, you, you want your sphere of influence to remember you. So this is a great time to get in touch with all the people you've ever done business with in the past, even people you haven't done business with. Maybe, you know, you probably have just as many people that you've shown homes or met with who decided not to buy or not to sell. Get in touch with all those people, everybody that you've met. One of my coaches uh, taught me to have a tag in, in our CRM that says met. So everyone you've ever met, tag them with met. So oh, interesting. You, know, it, you can pull up, you know, filter. I want to, of all my people in my CRM, who are all the people I've met, met with face to face. Right. You know, so have that. And those are people, you know, you can continue to invite to your, your functions as well. 
and uh, you know, just tap into that sphere of influence. Now is the best time to tap into that sphere of influence. Get everybody warmed up on you as we enter the next year, 2023, and you'll be the person that they think of if they're interested in doing any kind of real estate business. So um, Saturday, I was, uh, um, I'm part of this group called Iron Men of God. They had their family picnic on Saturday and that was cool. They had a dunk tank there. They were, they were, you know, doing free burgers and hot dogs and a, something that was cool that they did. And I was coerced into doing it was, uh, the uh, donut eating contest, by the way. <laughs> so, I want to see a donut eating contest for kids from Krispy Kreme. <laughs> donut eating contest. You know, I, I said yes to it because I thought they were short on participants. And then at the end of it, it was like 12 kids and me. And, uh, and it, was, it was, uh, it was, it was pretty funny, but that was a great idea. You know, it was a great idea to have something like that. I, it was only a two minute contest. So I thought to myself, I justified it by saying, how much damage can I do to my body in two minutes? You know? So, um, that was a good time. Everyone had a kick out of that and the dunk tanks, a cool idea. Um, so, you know, they were doing an event. It got us together. I've been missing the meetings lately because of the kids school schedule, but, even though I've been missing the meetings lately, I was able to reconnect with everybody there because there was an event on a Saturday that I was able to attend. So, you know, that's that's that speaks to the point that we're making here. Yeah. So, um, well, like yeah. We've done some some Christmas stuff. You know, we will drop off to our top 50 or all of our closed clients for 2022, either like Rosemary Trees or Poinsettias, um, pick them up at Costco. Um, you get obviously everything's bigger at Costco, so you got the bigger rosemary, you got the bigger poinsettias all there, but mm -hmm. you got to get there early and you got to deliver them early because they do die in your car. <laughs> um, and make sure you water them if you have them longer than a couple of days. But I'm just leaving them at the front door, picture text to the person, hey, just want to wish you a Merry Christmas, congrats on the closing this year, uh, whatever it is, or if it's a top 50, just thinking about you this holiday season, um, you know, picture text to them. Check your front door because some people don't use their front doors. They use garages, whatever. Um, yeah. That way they know it's there and it's a start of a communication back to them. Yes. Yeah, that's that's a great idea. And, um, you know, so if you want ideas for this stuff, we've done a ton of, you know, different kinds of events and giveaways. We're happy to chat with you on that. Plus, we have some training events coming up soon. So we've got a list of, uh, of planned events coming up. And uh, you've got the video. Uh, video got yeah, this week. Yeah, and always check out agentswhoin.com slash events. We keep that updated there with what we have going on at the office. But um, we have How to Be Fearless in Video with Yvonne Sandoval this Wednesday at 11 o'clock with lunch by Lawrence Heisler and Robin Winkler with Celebration. Um, happy to have you guys there for that. Um, but it, And everyone actually will be doing a quick video with everybody after, so they have a video to walk out with and realize how easy it is. Mm -hmm. So if you come, be prepared to be on video because the idea is to – be fearless on video. And so you're going to be walking out with a recording and yeah. whatever that recording is, is what you do. Uh, it's not a full 10 minute production, but it's a quick, Hey, I'm Todd Schroth, the XP Realty. You know, I'm awesome in real estate. Whatever you want to say on it is what you can put on it. And that could be your intro to clients. That could be your uh, quick thing to send to a listing presentation, whatever you want to do. Um, and whatever we can do with the capacity at the office is we will uh, do for you guys there with the recordings. Yeah. So people who are, you know, fearful of being doing lots of videos, let's say, why don't you think about just knocking one good video out that you can use over and over to start with? Obviously, the idea is to get comfortable on video and do, you know, you don't want to you don't want the real estate industry to outgrow you. Uh, so be on video. Obviously, every agent's been hearing that for 10 years. And uh, so it's something that you want to you want to get comfortable with. But one way to kind of tiptoe into it is just make one good video that you can use over and over. Maybe it's a one minute video where you're just introducing yourself that you can send out to uh, leads or clients as you start working with them. And then once you once you do that, maybe maybe once a month you can create a video that you plan to reuse for different purposes. Maybe this is my buyer intro. Maybe this is my seller intro. I'm going to create a video that explains to a buyer once we're under contract what the next steps will be. So it doesn't have to be like, uh, hey, I, I'm, I have to do a Facebook Live at least once a day. You know, maybe you can graduate to that, but think about how you can baby step your way into 
becoming fearless on video. So that's what this event, uh, October 26th, right? What time is it? It's at 11 o'clock. We'll have lunch there for everyone after as well while, while we're doing recordings. I mean, here's two videos you could probably walk away with if we have time to record everybody. Why to do business with, with me as a buyer's agent and why to do business with me as a uh, seller's agent. And so if you get a seller's lead, send them to the seller's one. If you get a buyer lead in, send them to the, the buyer one. And then say, hey, I, this is Todd Schroeder. I just want to introduce myself so you can see a face to a name, you know, and, and send it out. And yep. Daniel, like you, I don't know if you always feel this on video. You've done a lot more than I have, um, but it's you get comfortable with it. And look at what we're doing now. We're we're doing these every week, and I'm doing them every couple of days, recording a lot of videos, and it just gets easier and easier and easier. Right. Um, and you know, you learn as you go. So the first one's going to suck. The last one's going to be a lot better. You have to be willing to get the the the, the crappy ones out of the way. Just get yeah, them over. Send it out. You know, yeah, exactly. At least do it. Exactly. The sooner you can get the crappy ones out of the way, you're just going to be getting better and better. There are people that yeah. you see on YouTube and Facebook and you say, wow, you know, these people are amazing. But if you look at their history and go back to their first few videos, you see how they've graduated in skill and, uh, and yeah. everything like that. And so but that you won't graduate without, you know, you're not going to you're not going to graduate school without showing up. So you got to show up and graduate little by little. So now is the best time to start. Yesterday was the best time to start. Today is the next best time to start. So I want to leave you with this. Tom Ferry made a comment at a conference when he started recording videos on YouTube in 2007. All of the coaches yelled at him and said, why are you giving away our content for free on Facebook? Or not, not on Facebook, on YouTube. Look at him now. He goes, I'm giving it away. I'm giving them an item of value so they come to me. I got more co coaching clients now than I did in 2007, and here we are. So I didn't give it away. I built an audience, and the audience is now paying me to coach them. That so, was my Tom Ferry impersonation. Yep. Oh, there you go. <laughs> There's, it's going to be hard to write with that whiteboard in the background. It's a little a little rigid. But that that's is right. that's exactly what it is. Tom's up there writing. Best time to do it is now. But it's he started in 2007. And his videos weren't that good. And he got better. And he got better. And he got better. And you and I have been in the business since 2007. We should have got on YouTube then too. Yep. Look what we look at the following we'd have and the business we'd have from YouTube. YouTube's free. It's just time. So you have to be unafraid to experiment with new things. Correct. You know, when I started doing video, I I bought a camera and I set it on a tripod and put it on my desk. And I tried to remember these long things and I did, you know, cut one, cut two, cut three and four. You know, I'm spending four hours to try to make a 10 minute video. I know a lot of people can relate to that. And uh, but if I didn't have the um, if if I never tried that in the beginning, I wouldn't be to the level of comfort that I am today. So just get that out of the way. If that's how you feel like you have to do it, get that out of the way and, um, you know, we'll make it happen. So very no, good. And that's um, it. It's just just get started and start doing it. Yeah. And right. guys, this Wednesday video, let's do it. Let's crush it. Um, and we will see you guys. Uh, have an awesome week. Have an awesome week. We'll see you soon. Take care. All right.